The space in which we live should be for the person we are becoming now, not for the person we were in the past. Marie Kondo. Hello, love. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller, and this is Open Studio, my show where I help you gain more creative confidence and live a more artistic life. I'm an artist and instructor living in Sacramento, California. Together at my studio and on creative field trips, we'll explore inspiration, art supplies, techniques, and business secrets so that you can bring more joy and success into your creative practice. Welcome back. It's studio tour day. This is the second video in a two-part series. In the last video, I shared my step-by-step -step decluttering process and also began with a few questions that you can ask yourself to see if your studio space is too cluttered, whether it's a home studio or a commercial studio. In that video, you can see more of what I decided to get rid of as well. Now in today's video, I'm going to tour you around so that you can see the finished results of my spring cleaning and decluttering. I have some new furniture in place and things are really spiffed up, so I'm excited to show you. Also, I just wanted to mention that in the past, I have rented studios so that I would have more space. But honestly, what I really should have done is declutter and let go of my unnecessary supplies. I would have saved myself so much time and money with the move and schlepping and the rent and the utilities and dealing with landlord stuff and all that. So before you start thinking that you need to pay for a larger studio, try streamlining your space. Unless you're working really big or you're doing something that requires really big equipment, I bet you'll find that you already have a great studio right under your nose if you just rearrange and declutter a little bit, okay? Are you ready? I'm stalling, can you tell? If this was one of those HGTV shows, this would be the point where they do a clip of the homeowner screaming out loud in joy and then cut to commercial to create suspense. Anyway, without further ado, here we have the way things looked before the declutter session. It was messy and there were things on the floor and in my way. And here it is now. I'm loving how accessible everything is. There are no piles in the corners of the room which make moving around the space really effortless. Everything I need is right there up off of the floors on my newly installed shelves. And the things I don't really need to use very often are stored away. I drew up plans for this shelf. I cut these down from taller shelves and connected them together to create a nice long ledge to kind of work as a counter for display and storage. Up above, I removed the curtains and I sold them for 40 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. They were way too big for the space. I have my glass palettes on the windowsill, which I like because the light shines through them and they remind me of stained glass. To the left, I have my big plant whose name is Fred and I got Fred for Christmas and it's doing really well in the room. I like having it off the ground because it takes up less floor space and it creates visual height, which is nice in the corner of the room. And it kind of hides the phone jack and the modem for the internet. Next, I have my pen and pencil area. Above, I have some everyday pens for quick notes. Then down below, I have my illustration pens, pencils and accessories, and Sharpies. Next to that, I have a little hand-carved dish, and it has space for a few post-its and some small office items. And next to that, I have a mason jar with my scissors and my rulers. Moving down, we're in office and shipping territory. I have my printer, my pencil sharpener, and a lot of tape. Under that, I have a basket of flat items like watercolor paper, a palette pad, my beading tray, my accordion file folder, and some envelopes of painting studies from my color mixing class. And to the left, I have some larger canvas and a portfolio with more works on paper inside. Now let's move over to the middle. I have my paints and brushes arranged in decorative containers. The caddy I got in a white elephant gift exchange a couple years ago. I wasn't using it for entertaining very much, but it does work splendidly for my fluid acrylics. I have my brushes split up into long and short handle brushes. Both vases are from the thrift store, and next to that, I have my water container for rinsing my brushes while I'm painting. 
Below that, I have a power strip where I can now charge my camera batteries and plug things in really easily. Next to that, I have this really cute tray that I got a while back from World Market. This is my office inbox, and below is my file cabinet. Before, I had all of my paperwork in a huge basket, and it would collect way too many things in it. So now this is really specific and streamlined. Leaning on the file cabinet, I have larger 18 by 24 art. These are too big to fit in my built-in cabinet, which I'll show you in a minute. So this space is a nice narrow area where they fit really well. Over on the right side of my shelves, I have a bouquet that Michael got for me, which I dried. It's sitting on a mercury glass pedestal slash candle holder to create some height variation in my display. Next to that, I have a milk glass goblet, which is also thrifted, and it holds a small assortment of pens and pencils that I can reach from my seat. In the center here, I have a place where I can display my recent projects or works in progress. And to the left of that, I have more decoration. I have a dried King Protea flower that was in my wedding bouquet. And along with that, I have some weird little spiky seed pods. I got those on the day that I shot the footage for the intro for my open studio videos when I was at the lake. Those are in a really pretty silver antique pitcher, thrifted as well. And below that, I have some vintage porcelain doll heads and a hand with a crystal and a little tassel. And I like to have a few odd little quirky things as well, if you can tell. I'm not a big fan of dolls, but if they're art dolls or just doll heads, I'm into it. On the second shelf, I have another milk glass container where I have my Exactos and paint scrapers for my glass palettes. There's a mason jar for collecting my palette's dried paint that I scrape off. And behind that, I have some acrylic medium and brush soap. I have a glass with my metallic and iridescent paints. And next to that are my art journals. These are necklaces that I make from salvaged vintage jewelry that I take apart and put back together. And I hook them on this carabiner to keep them from getting tangled. I don't market these very much, even though I probably should. They're kind of a crafty side project that I do when I need a change every once in a while. On the bottom is a thrifted basket with my aprons, paint rags, a spray bottle, and a hair dryer. So all of this is kind of for controlling water and the drying time of my paint. To the right of my shelves, I have my folding table and rolling chair. I can move them around depending on what I'm doing. I got the chair for a buck at the thrift store and it's really comfy. The way I have it now would be for working at my computer or working on my little tabletop easel. And then if I'm filming, I'll move the chair to the other side of the table and face the window and kind of scoot it against the wall as much as I can. Then I hang my camera and tripod from the ceiling to get overhead shots and the best light. And you can see Zoe also likes to hang out with me in my studio. She's upset right now because the chair is pushed in and she can't hop up on the table to check if there are any kitty treats. Moving along, I have this little wall space where I can hang a larger canvas. It's so nice and clear right now with no piles on the floor like before. Now I can move around the table without having to step over anything, which is really nice. On the opposite side of the room, I switched out some artwork. Now I have up my vintage painting of this wave signed by the artist Roberts. I call it my Jennifer painting because the name Jennifer actually means the crashing white sea foam part of a wave. And I really like painting seascapes, so this is my Jennifer painting. Also, it's more of a natural scene and has some great negative space in it, which gives a more light and airy look to the room than the piece that was up there before. Finally, let's look inside this built-in cabinet. Here I'm storing most of my canvas and paintings. I can fit up to about a 16 by 20 inch canvas in here, so that's the max size that I'm gonna limit myself to for now. I will work on larger canvas for commissions, but because this is a really small room, I'm not gonna work any larger for my own projects. And this saves me lots of money as well as space. On the top shelf, I have acrylic backstock. So when I run out of a paint color in my caddy or an acrylic medium, I can grab a backup from here. Down below, I'm keeping my black jewelry bin on the left with all of my salvaged beads. And on the right is my thrifted leather bag that I have my camera equipment in. And on the bottom, I have 
a tabletop easel, planar easel, my tripod, and some travel bags. You might have noticed that my large floor easel isn't in the room anymore, so now it's stored in the garage. Since I'm not going to work larger than 60 by 20, I don't really need it. But if I get a commission for a large piece, which I still love to do, I can easily grab it and work larger. Okay, that's everything. By the time that I recorded this audio for the video, I had already used the space for painting. Setup and cleanup was a breeze, and I'm really satisfied with the room. And as I mentioned before, if you're just starting out, you really only need the basics. Instead of collecting all of the art supplies you can, I recommend putting in the time to practice with the ones you already have. And if you need help learning the basics, I'm going to leave more online class information for you soon here at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next episode of Open Studio. I don't want you to miss it, so be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, or better yet, swing by my website and subscribe to my e-newsletter to get some freebies like my guide on how to be a successful artist and news on video releases and class offers. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Much love. Art is magic. It reveals to us the emotions and beauty in our surroundings and within our souls. It can inspire and relax us, make us laugh and cry, and is worth a thousand words. Every artist wants to capture the essence of the scenes in our work, but when it comes to color mixing in your art, it might seem like something's missing. Maybe you seem to be running into muddy colors, or perhaps your paintings seem to lack dimension and end up feeling flat, or possibly you're not quite sure how to start or which paints to buy. The paint aisle at the art store is a big place and there are so many choices which can be a little intimidating. If this sounds familiar, it's likely that you need more information and practice with color theory and mixing. And the good news is that I can help. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I've worked in the arts for over 20 years as a painter, teacher, a frame designer, and I've also worked in art supply sales and art galleries. What I've noticed from talking with artists, as well as in my own career, is that things can get out of control pretty quickly when you don't know how to get the right colors. Some people think that they need to buy all of the colors because they're afraid to mix at all, and other artists try and save money, but the colors aren't very compatible and they end up wasting paint in the end. I had to learn and work on my practice to be able to mix the right colors and I've seen countless students be able to do the same thing even when they thought they couldn't do it in the beginning. In my online class, Color Quest, I share all of my secrets to color mixing. You'll learn how to pick the right paints from the art store, save money on paint that you can mix yourself, Mix vibrant colors that you can use in all genres of work, from abstract to landscapes and portraits. Bring amazing light and shadow into your work. Create beauty that will connect more with your audience and possibly lead to sales, if that's what you want. And your painting sessions will be so much more fun because you'll be mixing colors that make more sense and that you'll be proud of. So stop guessing about color mixing and end the frustration. All you need is four tubes of paint, one brush, a palette, and some watercolor paper. The rest of the materials you probably already own. In this class, you'll get video lessons where we create studies covering the color wheel, complementary colors, analogous colors, earth tones, tinting, shading, the grayscale, hues, and how to pick your own unique palette for what you want to achieve. In the end, we make some abstract art to loosen up and play with everything you've learned. Anyone can take this class. You'll be able to follow along just like if you were right there with me looking over my shoulder as I talk you through every decision and move I make. Plus, as a bonus, you'll get access to the Keller Collective Facebook group where you can stay engaged and get feedback. I offer a 30-day money-back guarantee so there's no risk at all. So come with me on a color quest and I promise you breakthrough after breakthrough will get you on the course for mixing color and light with more joy and ease. I'll see you there.